Today's broadcast is one you cannot afford to miss. Listen, I'm going to be talking about a character on the day that we're all familiar with. David. You remember David, the shepherd boy who defeated Goliath. The one that the women cried about. Saul has killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. And most of the time we talk about David, he's always the hero. But today, I want to challenge you to see a, a side of David's life that we don't often talk about. On today, in the message, David is in a valley of despair. His family has been taken. His men have turned on him. His city has been burned. David has every reason to throw in the towel. But the story says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. In other words, David did not respond the way you thought he would have responded. And that's the focus of today's message. You're going to have difficulty. You're going to have challenge. But the end result will all be determined on how you respond. Listen, people of God, this may come as a shock to some and a surprise to others, but life can present us with circumstances and situations that will leave us feeling as though not only have we lost control, but everything that we're facing is beyond our control. Let, let me say it again. There, there can come some situations, some circumstances, amen, some challenges in your life that will leave you feeling like not only have you lost control, but everything that you're dealing with is beyond your control. Are you praying with me? You see, all of us, not some of us, all of us can face, have faced, or will face situations where we conclude that there is no way out. That there is no way of escaping the pressure of the predicament and there is no sensible solution to be found. Anybody ever been there? When you don't know when to do, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to do. Are you praying with me? You don't know what to do, you don't know how to act, you don't know how to respond. You can't see your way out, you don't know where to find help, you don't know where to find relief. And you can feel like every day is just another day of hell because you're in a situation that you cannot seem to get out of. And people of God, it's a terrible thing when you don't even look forward to another day. Because you've convinced yourself that if you make it another day, it's just going to be another day of hell. It's a terrible thing that instead of being excited, you're, you're depressed, you're disappointed, you're sad when the sun comes up. Because you've convinced yourself that it really doesn't make a difference what the calendar says. It really doesn't make a difference what people say. Because you know that this day is going to be nothing but absolute disappointment and heartache. Because that's what yesterday was. That's what the day before was. And that's a terrible place to be. And people of God, I'm convinced that that's where David finds himself in this text. Are you praying with me? Some of you will remember that in this text, David and his men have gone off to war to do battle with the Philistines. And while they are away, the Bible says that the Amalekites come and attack Ziglag, which is David's headquarters. It's one thing, amen, for somebody to mess with your stuff. It's another thing for them to come and invade your property. Are you praying with me? See, it's one thing to fool with me in the streets. That's another thing to fool with me in my own yard. I wish I had somebody. While they were off at battle, the Bible says that they come and they burn Ziglag, which was the headquarters. Now one would like to believe that if you're not protected anywhere else, you're protected at your headquarters. If you're not fortified anywhere else, you're fortified in your headquarters. You need to recognize that you're dealing with the real enemy when he gets big enough and bold enough and bad enough to come to your house, to come in your backyard and seek to do you some harm. I tell folk all the time, I don't try to go for bad, but this I do know. I whoop Mike Tyson in my own house, and y'all praying with me? And it's not because I'm the baddest thing going, but it's because everything it takes to get him, I know where it's hid, girl. I got something in the kitchen that'll change his mind. I got something in the living room that'll change his mind. And don't let me make it to my bedroom. I sure love that something will change his mind. Are y'all playing with me? It's a terrible thing when the enemy will come to your space and take your stuff. The Bible says that while they were away, the enemy comes to Ziglag, which was the headquarters, and burned the city. But not only did they burn the city down, watch this. The Bible said they took the women, they took the children, and they left nothing behind but ruin. Look at somebody and say evidence. See, sometimes it's not enough for the enemy just to mess with your stuff, but he wants you to know he's been to your house. He wants you to know he's messed with your stuff. So not only did they take the women and the children, but the Bible says that they left nothing behind but ruin. And so when David and his men returned, they found that the headquarters 
daughters had been ransacked and burned, but the most devastating part was that their families had been taken away. Y'all, David is in a perilous predicament. The loss of his family has devastated him. It's devastated his men. And as a result, you know how men do. Whenever you feel like you've been wrong, whenever you feel like you've been violated, you start looking for a way to exact some revenge. Are you praying with me? Come on, don't get super spiritual on me. You know when somebody's done you wrong, you may pray later on, but right then, you start thinking about how can I get them back? How can I get even? They start looking for a way to exact some revenge, some way to deal with their hurts, some way to deal with their anger. And the Bible says that while they were tri trying to figure out what to do, all of a sudden, David men began to talk about stoning him. Now the enemy has come and burn the headquarters. The enemy has come and take the wife and the children. But the men are so upset. They say, we can't get nobody else. We're going to mess around and get David. Are you praying with me? That should not come as a great shock to you. You do know that's why the devil is messing with you. You do know that's why the devil is raising hell in your life. Because he's figured out, I can't do nothing with God. I can't do nothing with Jesus. So I might as well get down. So that when they could not get the enemy, they started talking about this is what we're going to do. They're going to stone David. And this might be a mighty good time to tell somebody that it doesn't take long for the pendulum of people's moods to swing in another direction. You do know it just takes a few minutes for you to go from a hero to a zero in the hearts of minds and people. You do know, don't you, that the same people who love you today will hate you not tomorrow but hate you today. I wish I had somebody. The same people who are your friends today can become your worst enemies today. The same people who supported you today will mess around and turn on you today. The same people who pat it on your back today will be the same fuck to stab you in your back today. I wish I had any help in here. Is there anybody that's ever caught some hell in the same day? And so here David is. Here David is. Here David is. The Bible says that he is greatly distressed. The Bible doesn't say he's troubled. The Bible doesn't say he's worried. The Bible says that he is greatly distressed. And so I have to ask myself, why did the Bible choose to use this word distress? Well, this word distress, you all, based on the original Hebraic rendering of the text, suggests that he is trapped in a place where there seems like there's no way out. Are y'all praying with me? He distress you all because he's trapped in a place where there seems like there's no way out. Have you ever been trapped in something and it looks like you cannot get out of it? It's a terrible thing when you find yourself in a place and you can't seem to find no exits. I wish I had somebody. I often talk about in our Bible study how I am the biggest fan of wrestling in the midst of I'm not a wrestling fan. I'm a wrestling fan. See, now that WWE, that's wrestling. Channel 5, Jerry the King Lauder, that's wrestling. Are y'all playing with me? I'm a wrestling fan. I remember, I remember Brother Swafford. I remember I used to go to the Mid-South Coliseum to go watch Jerry Lawler wrestling. Are you playing with me? And see, that's when the Mid-South Coliseum was the spot. We didn't know nothing about no pyramid. We just knew the Mid-South South Coliseum and one particular night y'all Monday night wrestling I messed around and got careless back then I don't know what I had my mind on I was in such a hurry to go get me some popcorn because see, it was almost time for the main event bro, bro, Swaffy, you see Jerry the King Lola was getting ready to wrestle Dirty Dutch Man Taylor. I did not want to miss the main event so I messed around and left my seat and ran to the concession stand but I did not bother to look at the letters over the door so when I turned from the concession stand I didn't know whether to go left or right I did not know where I was sitting. And it's a terrible thing to feel like you're in a place and you don't know which way to go. You don't know which way to turn. And that's where David found himself. The Bible says he was distressed because he was in a situation that he thought he could not get out of. There is no exit. He has no family. He has no friends. His men have turned their backs on him. He's all by himself. But... I like what the text says David does because the text says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. I guess I'm going to just preach to myself today. It says David strengthened himself in the Lord. David refused to be despondent. He refused to have a pity party. He did not cause the enemy to allow him to review the problems and come depressed. Can I talk to y'all? You see, the real issue, watch this now, watch this now. The real issue is never what you're going through. The real issue is never what you're dealing with. The real issue is not what you're having to face. The real issue is never what people are saying about you. The real issue is not what people want to do with you. The real issue is how are you going to respond? Look at your neighbor and say, how are you going to respond? See, the real issue is never how much trouble you got. The real issue is never who walked out of you. The real issue is not who talking about you. The real issue is not what you're going through. The real issue is how will you respond? Look at your neighbor and ask them, how will you respond? Listen, 
listen, listen, listen. And watch this. Now watch this now. The reason I read all the way down to verse number six is because in verse number six, you all, I see a small word, but it's got some power. Can I tell you what it is? That word right there in number six that I almost jumped off the page, can I tell you what it is? But I wish I had somebody. Because see, when I see that word but in verse number six, that lets me know that I can have a response that's the opposite of my situation. Hello, somebody. I don't have to respond to my situation. I can respond in spite of my situation. Look at your neighbor and say, how are you going to respond? It's exciting. It's amazing. It's the celebration of the year, and you're invited. At this exciting kid-friendly fair, your children will experience welcoming neighbors from the Bible and explore the everyday life of neighbors from Japan, Zimbabwe, the United Kingdom, Australia, and Mexico. Kids will discover that God's love welcomes everyone as they learn to love and serve God and be a neighbor to the world. Is it a fair? Is it God's village? Yes! At the Everywhere Fun Fair, kids experience different cultures as they explore how neighbors near and far are all part of God's family. Everywhere Fun Fair VBS will excite every type of learner with these easy to lead attractions. Interactive Bible storytelling. Cool crafts. Fabulous science adventures. Global games. Yummy treats. A festive assembly time with the adorable Godwin Mary Feather and much more. With Everywhere Fun Fair VBS, your kids will not only hear the Bible stories, they will experience them. Give your kids the experience of a lifetime and help them learn just how amazing Jesus is.